Hey friends, welcome back. Okay. This is Ashley and the cat. And Isla and the cats from Uncommon Roots Homestead. And today Isla and I are gonna plant some lettuce for the fall garden. And also I just noticed we just got our first ripe passion fruit. So do you want to try the passion fruit? Uh-huh. And we have the, the boy dad now. <laughs> and we got a bowl. That's what she's talking about. But let's go try that passion fruit and then we'll plant some lettuce. Isla didn't want to try it, but basically the inside there's like these little seed pods that are mm, they're like tart. Definitely tropical. And then there's a seed inside. This like black little seed. They're really good actually. I'm not really sure how to look up how you can like use them. Like I'm not sure how you would get all the seeds out, but they're good. They're definitely more tart than I was expecting. Kind of like a, kind of like a warhead a little bit. Like they have that like sweet bit and then it gets really tart and then it's sweet again. They're pretty good. All right, so the consensus is that these are good. I like them. They're really beautiful. Like the vine is beautiful. I think passion flowers are one of the prettiest flowers that you can have in the garden. Um, they're just so unique and different. There's nothing quite like them. So. I definitely recommend. Also, passion vines are really great um, because they're they're pretty hardy. Like they just keep coming back, and they're actually a little bit invasive, so they'll spread. Um, I have had no issues with keeping my passion vine healthy and vibrant. In fact, you guys know I'm thinking about putting another passion vine over on my arch that is still naked. Here we are in August a naked arch so I'm hoping next year to put a really healthy strong passion vine there I tried like a little seedling and he just died but I also didn't water him so it's probably why he died but um, I think it's a great option if you have an extra space for something that needs to climb and you just want something unique I wouldn't say it's like a super um, useful fruit to have in the garden I mean you can eat it it's good it's a good like snack it's kind of a fun snack but it's not gonna like fill you up and yeah, it's probably not like the most useful. I am gonna research what I can do with it though and how I can get the seeds out easier. So, it's staying here on our homestead. <laughs> so Isla tuckered out on me a little bit, but I am going to grab my lettuce seeds and let's go plant some lettuce. All right, so I told you guys in my last video that um, fall or early spring crops are really some of my favorite to like enjoy in the garden. Not necessarily my favorite to like eat or preserve or things like that, though they are some of the best fresh eats, like fresh greens and salads and things like that. What I always find ironic is that people associate salad with summer and actually most lettuce varieties don't grow very well in like the thick of the summer. You really have to like, you have to put a shade cloth over them. Like they end up being kind of high maintenance because they bolt so easily. They really prefer it cold, um, but not too cold. So in early spring and early fall into like even mid to late fall, lettuce does really well, especially here in our zone, which is zone 7A East Tennessee. So again, now you might be in, I don't know, Baltimore and also in zone 7A and your first frost might be much sooner than mine here in East Tennessee. Your zone has nothing to do with your frost dates. Your zone has to do with your coldest and hottest temperatures throughout the entire year. So 365 days, what's the lowest that you get to and the highest that you get to. That's how the zones are established. So often the climate itself can be very different even though we might be in the same zone. So always keep that in mind. Make sure that you're aware of your first frost and your final frost because if you just follow someone who's in the same zone as you, you might end up off by a couple of weeks which could cost you your crop. So 
Anyways, I am um, a pretty good amount of time away from my first frost. I think technically it's in the end of October this year, but usually we'll get pretty well into November before we get a true hard frost. Lettuce will be okay and a couple of light frosts. So I'd say I've got, you know, until November before I even have to do anything to cover this lettuce. Um, but once the, the temperatures start getting a little bit cooler in the evenings, we're getting down to the 60s now. The days are still hot. We're, we're in like the high 80s, but they're supposed to be tapering off here soon. So it's the perfect time to plant some lettuce. Um, I don't start any of my early spring or fall crops inside. You absolutely can. I have not had luck transplanting lettuce in the past, so I just go ahead and I grab my seeds and I throw them straight into the ground. So I'm doing a lettuce blend, which I love. Um, it's just basically a bunch of different varieties of lettuce that you harvest as baby lettuce. Um, this one is the red wing lettuce mi mix from Baker Creek. I've done that a few times, I'm gonna be doing it again. I also have some chard I'm gonna do. Um, we don't eat a ton of chard, but I always plant it thinking that maybe I will this year, so maybe we'll eat it this year. I'm gonna plant some. Um, Butter crunch lettuce is one of our favorites. I always do butter crunch and like Merlot heads that I will thin out. So it's really important to have a plan going into the garden. What do you want to harvest as baby greens and what do you want to actually let get established and harvest as full head lettuce? So in this case, I'm gonna do my butter crunch as head lettuce and then I'm going to do all of my varieties or my mixes as baby lettuce. Now what's interesting is even in the blends that are specifically created for baby lettuce, you could actually sow those individually or thin them out and let them go to full heads. Um, a lot of times they're like different romaines in those blends and things like that. So that's always an option. And in the same way, you could do, um, I've actually done this with the Black Seeded Simpson. You can plant this really thick, thick and uh, harvest it as baby lettuce. So lettuce just has so much versatility and I love that you can get such a full bed that's gonna provide so much food. Um, and with baby lettuce, often I treat it like cut and come again. So I just basically like give it a haircut harvest it and then three days later it's ready for another haircut just like my kale that I planted. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. I also grabbed some um, giant red mustard. I might plant this, I might not. We never actually do anything with it. So do you plant mustard? What do you do with it? Let me know. Um, and then I grabbed arugula. I like arugula, um, but I like it in my lettuce and I don't like too much of it. So usually I'll just do like a row of this on the perimeter and call it a day. So I am going to go ahead and plant this. First, I'm gonna make a plan, which is that I'm gonna do my butter crunch. Um, I'm gonna sow those the proper spacing apart because I want them to go into full heads. My Merlot, same thing. I want them to go to full heads. And then I'm gonna do this blend as well as um, some of this black seeded Simpson as uh, baby lettuce. So I'm just gonna heavily sew those across. So let's do it right now. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did in my fall planting video, which is take all of the mulch we put on top here. I'm gonna push it aside, plant my seeds, and then bring it back over. And then I'm gonna water this really heavily. So the reason I am leaving mulch on these beds is that it is still pretty warm. There's still a lot of birds and everything flying around. So I don't want these seeds to get taken. I also wanna kind of protect them from the elements. So putting that mulch on top and just lightly, you know, I don't wanna like, super, super thick mulch. I want just a light mulch. It's actually just gonna hold everything in, help hold that moisture in, and actually help the seeds germinate. Um, sometimes it's better to not mulch until your seeds germinate, but here in this uh, fall garden, I'm choosing to do it this way. If I end up with having a problem with germination, or I notice that this pine mulch is like keeping my seedlings from growing, then I'll move it away and I'll try to help them or replant. I still have a ton of time, so I'm not too worried about it. This is my first year using this pine mulch, um, but it came highly recommended. And so far we're liking it. It was really easy to put on. We have access to wood chips. So I've gotten a lot of questions like, why aren't you just using wood chips? Everybody wants wood chips. Well, wood chips are just really hard to use as garden mulch. Um, it's perfect when we have done it, we love it. But the problem is you have to literally take the wheelbarrow, go to the pile, shovel heavy mulch into the wheelbarrow, bring it back, and then scoop it back on top of the beds. It is not like a, hey, I have 15 minutes, let me mulch six beds, which is what we did with the pine mulch. So um, definitely like some benefits to both, 
but I think that we're going to like using pine mulch and it's really inexpensive. So we actually found it um, at our local co-op and I think we paid like $7 for a whole bale and I got four bales thinking that's how much we would need and we only used like two. So um, worth considering if you are struggling to find mulch um, and, and you're wondering what you're gonna mulch with. I've also mulched in the past with straw um, and I really disliked that. I don't recommend it at all. It caused so many weeds to come into the garden because I mean, it's like seed straw most of the time. Like it's riddled with weeds um, and then it rains and they just grow and go wild. So not a fan, don't recommend. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and um, I actually found a mixed greens blend that I had. So I'm gonna do this on the end here and then I'll do my, um, I'll do a couple of the head lettuce and then I'll do my cut lettuce, um, my baby lettuce, and then I'll do heads and then I'll finish with this. I like to kind of, I don't know, break it up and add some variety. So I'm gonna do it now. I wanna show okay, you. Okay, so I just moved this mulch away and I wanted to show you something. It's actually been really dry here the last couple days. Look at how moist this compost is. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, the top layer is a little bit dry, but once you wipe that away, it's so rich and moist. It's absolutely perfect. So that is why you mulch. Um, you're mulching to protect the soil and to keep that moisture in. So to just show you that like after a couple of really hot dry days, I just moved that mulch aside and it's so moist underneath. That's why these seedlings are gonna do so much better when we've mulched the soil. And if you've been following us for a while, you know that this is the critical mistake that we made in the summer garden this year. We got lazy and didn't mulch any of our plants and then we had inconsistent rain and we dealt with a lot of blossom end rot and just a lot of stuff we probably could have avoided if we would have just had proper irrigation in the garden at the beginning of the year and mulched, but you win some, you lose some. So I'm gonna play. What? You know what? I did not bring any spinach. I did grab your um, cilantro. Oh, yes, thank you. I was just thinking that today. I was like, oh man, I wish I had cilantro already. But I don't know. I mean, I grabbed the seeds you saved. We didn't get any to germinate, but I'll put them all in. But we didn't take them out of the shell, remember? No. So what do I need to do? All right, so I went ahead and got all of that in. I sewed it all pretty densely. Even my uh, lettuce that I'm growing for heads of lettuce, I did three or four in each hole. And then what I'm gonna do is just thin those out once they get mm, probably like two or three inches tall. So that bed is done. We can count it off the list. I did realize that I didn't grab any spinach, which is maybe one of our favorite uh, one of our favorite things to eat in those early spring and fall. So I'm going to have to grab some spinach seeds when I get home. Uh, I had somebody ask on one of my videos, like why don't I just keep my seeds here by the garden because I always seem to forget what I need. Um, and I did for a while, but the garage is actually not climate controlled. And so we don't, I, I didn't want all of my seeds to go bad or to shorten their lifespan. So I keep them at home. And right now, as you know, our home is 25 minutes away from my garden. So usually by the time I get here, I have forgotten something and can't go back and get it. So that's why, that's why my seeds aren't here. That won't be a problem after this fall garden because the house will be done before we plant the spring garden. So when I'm here planting for spring, if I forget something, I'll just walk back to the house and that'll be that. <laughs> Hi, garden kitty, come here. He always likes to come say hello. Come here, buddy. Robin. 
Come here. Come say hi. He's not interested today. Yeah, I do. What are you eating? Some thyme from the herb bed. I love those herbs. It's probably my favorite place in the garden. Yeah, it's really good. I just like grabbing stuff out of it and eating it every now and then. The mint's really good like that. Basil every now and then. You're cute. Thanks. Look at that trombone Looks good. Mm -hmm. It's a giant squash. How much do you think it weighs? Uh, it's definitely a few pounds. It's getting heavy. Crazy. We have also been uh, walking through the garden and grabbing everything for bowls. So we always kind of struggle when we get to this time in the season with like, what should we make? Like what kind of food should we be eating with what's coming out of the garden? Um, we're in like high, heavy production and preservation mode, but then also we like to eat the food fresh too. So we've been on a bowl kick, which is basically where you do some kind of a rice or a grain on the bottom, sometimes some beans, some kind of protein, and then a ton of vegetables. So we're grabbing some carrots. Ooh, that's a good one. We're grabbing some carrots. Um, we grabbed some bunching onions. We grabbed some tomatoes and some peppers. We thought about pulling up some sweet potatoes. I still might go over and try to pull some up. Um, and I am about to grab a fresh bouquet. It is like the time in the garden where we are just enjoying it and trying to not just get caught up in how much do I have to preserve tonight? Like, am I gonna be up till midnight boiling tomatoes and all of the things because as wonderful as that is and as happy we're gonna be that we did that in the winter, I also wanna take some time and just enjoy this season right now. So I'm gonna pick a bouquet and then I'm gonna see if I can grab a sweet potato, just to see. Let's do it. It's really in there. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, I lost some of it, but <laughs> he's a big one. It's a pretty good one. Look how gorgeous this guy. I mean, look at that. 100% out of the garden. So of course, this is just like me. I feel like I've kidnapped you all. I told you we were gonna be planting lettuce, which we did. And now we're like on the hunt for sweet potatoes, but I just gotta see. And also the kids are losing it in the car, so I gotta hurry anyways. But let me just see if I can get one. Okay, so. I feel some tubers down there. You can kind of see them, but they feel pretty small. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it alone. They feel pretty small. Just gonna bury him back up and leave him there. We are close. Usually like the end of September is when they recommend that you pull sweet potatoes in our area. So I'm gonna just wait for the end of September and then we'll go ahead and do it. Also, there are so many tomatoes and the birds the birds are getting to the tomatoes, but is what it is. Friends, thank you. Thank you for letting me hijack you in the garden, tell you about dinner, pick some flowers, plant some lettuce. It's a good day to be in this space and you always have a place here. Until next time. Follow us on Instagram. <laughs>